In this video, you'll discover the ins and outs of type 1.5 diabetes, what it is, how it differs from other types of diabetes, share evidence-based guidelines on how it's best managed, and show you which blood tests are necessary for an official diagnosis. The secret is to understand exactly what makes type 1.5 different from type 1 and type 2 diabetes, because it's very important and can completely change the course of your diabetes treatment. This information will get you amazing results and teach you how to drop your A1C, like Kim, who was able to control her blood glucose with precision within weeks after being diagnosed with type 1.5 diabetes, even though she was previously diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. I'm Cyrus Kambata, the co-founder of Mastering Diabetes and the New York Times best-selling co-author of the book, Mastering Diabetes, how to reverse insulin resistance permanently in type 1, type 1.5, type 2, prediabetes, and gestational diabetes. If you want to really understand type 1.5 diabetes in detail, keep watching this video. Type 1.5 diabetes likely affects a lot more people than the medical community may actually realize. According to the American Diabetes Association, of those who were diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, type 1.5 diabetes occurs in 10% of individuals over the age of 35 years old and in a quarter of people below the age of 35. This means that about two to three million people are living with type 1.5. One example is Kim, who was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and continued to suffer for 18 years from extreme swings in blood glucose and exhaustion that made her unable to exercise. I was having extreme highs and extreme lows, and it was, it was exhausting. As you may have guessed, she wasn't living with type 2 diabetes. She learned that she actually had type 1.5 diabetes, and once she found that out, her blood glucose control improved almost immediately. Now, you may not have heard of type 1.5 diabetes until recently, or even right now, and that's because it's a somewhat new scientific discovery. This brings us back to 1977, when researchers published a fascinating discovery in The Lancet that 11% of type 2 diabetes patients in their sample had antibodies against the insulin-producing beta cells in their pancreas. In other words, their immune system was attacking their own pancreas, but they thought that they had just type 2 diabetes, which wasn't supposed to have an autoimmune component. It then took another couple of decades to officially name this new condition latent autoimmune diabetes in adults. The more common name is type 1.5 diabetes, which is what you'll hear us use over and over. To understand what makes type 1.5 diabetes different, it's useful to briefly cover the diagnostic criteria for type 1 and for type 2. Type 1 diabetes is characterized by a rapid decline in insulin production. It typically begins in adolescence and has been referred to as childhood onset diabetes, although we are now seeing people diagnosed with type 1 diabetes as adults. This is caused by an autoimmune reaction that eventually stops the insulin producing cells in your pancreas from making insulin at all. People with type 1 diabetes must inject exogenous insulin in order to control their blood glucose levels and avoid life-threatening complications that come along with uncontrolled blood glucose. Type 2 diabetes is most common in adults and is caused by insulin resistance, a condition that mainly affects your liver and your muscle tissue. In its early stages, type 2 diabetes is referred to as non-insulin dependent, which is characterized by the following sequence of events. Step 1. Insulin resistance in your muscle and liver dramatically increase your insulin requirements. Step two, insulin resistance in your muscle and in your liver increases over time, resulting in an increased demand for insulin production from your pancreas. Step three, the beta cells in your pancreas increase their insulin output, resulting in hyperinsulinemia or high blood glucose. Step four, when beta cells can't make enough insulin to overcome insulin resistance in your muscle and liver, your blood glucose becomes elevated, causing hyperglycemia. In the later stages, type 2 diabetes can become classified as insulin dependent, resulting in the following events. Step five, beta cells in your pancreas manufacture and secrete excess insulin for months or even years in an effort to overcome insulin resistance in both your muscle and your liver. Step six, beta cells eventually lose their ability to overproduce insulin and begin a process of programmed cell death called apoptosis. Step seven, as beta cells begin to die, insulin production decreases. Step eight, beta cell exhaustion results in an insufficient insulin production, which then leads to high blood glucose. Step nine, exogenous insulin is required to properly control your blood glucose 
and minimize the risk for diabetes complications. The key distinction between insulin-dependent type 2 diabetes and type 1.5 diabetes is the presence of autoantibodies. In a person living with insulin-dependent type 2 diabetes, autoantibodies are not present, meaning that it is not an autoimmune condition. Whereas in type 1.5 diabetes, autoantibodies are present. Now that you know the basics, here are a few points from this study in the journal Diabetic Medicine that help distinguish type 1.5 from type 2 diabetes. People with type 1.5 diabetes often have higher hemoglobin A1C levels than patients with type 2, a lower age at diabetes onset, typically 30 to 50 years old, a lower body mass index, more frequent need for insulin treatment than people with type 2 diabetes. The symptoms of type 1.5 diabetes include fatigue, weakness, tingling in your hands and feet, dry, itchy skin, hunger soon after you're done eating, blurred vision, and frequent urination. Now let's talk about how type 1.5 diabetes is diagnosed. According to Diana Consumier, PhD, geneticist at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, correctly characterizing LADA is important because it may determine whether a patient receives the most appropriate treatment. Type 1.5 diabetes is diagnosed by taking a blood test to see if you have autoantibodies against your own pancreas, including glutamic acid decarboxylase, or GATA, Insulinoma associated to autoantibodies or IA2A, islet cell cytoplastic antibodies called ICA, insulin autoantibodies IAA or the zinc transporter 8 ZNT8AB. If you test positive for a minimum of one of these antibodies, then you may be diagnosed with type 1.5 diabetes. But the antibody situation is different from type 1 diabetes in terms of how much damage has been done to the beta cells in your pancreas. From the Diabetes Association, Unlike type 1 diabetes, latent autoimmune diabetes in adults is a disorder in which, despite the presence of islet antibodies at diagnosis, the progression of autoimmune beta cell failure is slow. And for the nerds, immunologically, glutamic acid decarboxylase 65 autoantibodies are by far the most common autoantibody in adult onset type 1.5 diabetes. In addition, C peptide should be tested since it's a marker of insulin production. Put simply, a C-peptide test measures whether the beta cells in your pancreas are able to produce a sufficient amount of insulin, or whether their ability to produce insulin has been impaired due to a progressive damage over the course of time. As this study mentions, an ideal therapeutic approach would aim not only at obtaining a good metabolic control, but also at protecting residual beta cell mass and function. Here are a few things that can help you manage type 1.5 diabetes. Number one, the use of insulin. A quote from an ADA paper reads, in agreement with proved impaired beta cell function at diagnosis of diabetes, insulin is the treatment of choice. Meaning that as soon as you have the data to demonstrate that your beta cells are not secreting a sufficient quantity of insulin, the use of insulin therapy is the treatment of choice. Number two, start implementing the mastering diabetes method in your life to increase your insulin sensitivity and make the most of the insulin that you still are producing. This is accomplished via a low-fat, plant-based, whole food diet, as well as intermittent fasting and daily exercise. This approach will not only increase your chances of preserving beta cell function, but will also reduce your risk for the complications associated with diabetes, including, but not limited to, heart disease, chronic kidney disease, fatty liver disease, peripheral neuropathy, and Alzheimer's disease. So what happened to Kim? After learning about the C-peptide test, she discovered that her C-peptide was actually very low and that she was living with type 1.5 diabetes. She went on insulin therapy and fully embraced a low-fat, plant-based, whole food lifestyle, which has significantly increased her insulin sensitivity, which in turn has kept her overall insulin requirements very low. I have more energy now. I have more control. It's more of a continuous, predictable blood sugar. Her glucose went from 140 to between 70 and 80 in the fasting state. At 52 years old, Kim says she feels like she's in her 20s again. In addition, her newfound love for mangoes and berries, she also has discovered that she enjoys exercise now more that she can do it regularly without feeling exhausted. Another success story in our program is Patricia. After adopting the Mastering Diabetes Method and shifting to a low-fat, plant-based, whole food diet, Patricia lost 50 pounds, dropped her A1C to a steady 6%, and saw a 45 point drop in her LDL cholesterol. She now says that she has more energy than ever before, and she's very happy about that. In summary, there are millions of people living with type 1.5 diabetes that may have been misdiagnosed 
with type two diabetes. We see this repeatedly in our coaching program. Many people hear about clients who reverse their type two diabetes and then become frustrated when they don't experience the same results after following our methodology. The reason is because it's because they're actually living with type 1.5 diabetes and simply do not have adequate insulin circulating in their blood or the diagnostic blood work to prove it. If you feel like you might be in this situation, we highly recommend that you get a diabetes antibody test and a C-peptide test. These are simple blood draws that you can get at any lab such as Quest or LabCorp. Take a look at the links below this list so that you know exactly which test to get. And we also highly recommend that you consult with a plant-based doctor to help you interpret your results. Plant-based telehealth and the Barnard Medical Clinic are two fantastic options. Again, the links for each of these organizations are below. Now we've worked with many type 1.5 clients and can assure you that once you have the proper treatment plan from a qualified doctor and implement the Mastering Diabetes Method, you will be able to sit in the driver's seat of your diabetes health eat delicious carbohydrate rich foods and feel like a million bucks. Just like Kim, like Anna, like Patricia. If you like this video, click on the subscribe button below and turn on notifications to be alerted when we post new videos. Also, if you want more life-saving information about how to eat for all forms of diabetes, then head on over to our website at masteringdiabetes.org start and enter your name and email address. It's free. You'll receive information from us that can truly change the course of your diabetes health for the better. And last, but certainly not least, leave a comment below and tell us what form of diabetes you may be living with and whether you suspect that you may actually be living with type 1.5 diabetes. Remember, we are here to help.